It's alive! It's alive! <laughs> I mean, I'm back live! With a new completion of Sailor Cosmos. Finally, after four long months of work, I get to show you how the job was done. So let's start the shenanigans. Remember that I said that I was going to do something special with her scepter? Okay, the special part was my idea of casting it in clear resin, since E also forgot that her scepter was supposed to be transparent, so if you want to do something right, do it yourself. First thing was the mold. I used Easy Mold Silicone Putty, it's a two part that you mix in equal parts and dries in just 15 minutes. What I liked about this product apart from the dry time is that you don't need mold release to cast it. Place in your mold and just use your original to press onto the putty, but you have to be fast as this thing starts to dry really quickly. So onto the pouring stage where you mix your clear resin. I use Cast and Crafts Easy Cast. This is also a two-part mix, so you need to be careful when pouring equal parts. and then just stir it until it's equally blended. Here's when everything went wrong. This product is supposedly guaranteed bubble-free as the chemicals are designed to release the bubbles by themselves. But apparently that was only for one part molds and not two. So my result after it dried was less than satisfactory. You can't have bubbles and much less like these. This segment was brought to you by LFMF. Learn from my fail. I do it so that you won't have to. Okay, I cheated. I made two different casts so that those pesky bubbles would disappear and have a clean, clear cast. Then just added the Zappagap glue, which is also transparent, and the trick is done. All that's left is just to sand and polish. Some small bubbles were left on the feathers, but it's okay. Those parts will be painted. Since Naoko Takeuchi never specified and placed a pattern for Sailor Cosmos, as for colors and textures, every artist has the liberty of making their own Sailor version and it will still look good. Some paint her with purple, others paint her blue, others just use gray, but when I hear the word Cosmos, my imagination goes straight to the source. I imagine lots of sparkles and lights, just beautiful and full of texture. So that's the theme that my Cosmos will have. On to the cool stuff. This is the first time I've ever used a pre-made flesh tone. These are from Mr. Hobby, flesh tones number 111 and 112. The 112 is used to pre-shade all of those areas where the light is supposed to make a shadow. The color is just like a pink tone, so the next step is to use the 111 flesh tone and soften the shades and that color. time that I ever used this flesh tone. I think it's okay, but it still needs something extra. The shades are a bit too soft, so I added some pastel shading. This is what it looks like after. And so you can have a better idea. Here's how the other pieces look like after the shades were added to emphasize some areas. After the skin was done, the next step is the dress and shoes. To be able to do that, I need to mask all the parts I painted. It's a tedious and long process. If you don't have patience, you will hate it. I've learned to like it. I've always heard other GKers rant about how much they hate it, but... I take it in a different way now. We all like to open presents, right? So I just think that by masking it, it will be a nice present to unwrap after you paint the next part of the piece.
I used Pro White to paint her shoes. They will have a glossy look to contrast over the matte skin later. Here's how the dress is coming up after some blue shades. I will also be using pastels to shade it a bit more, just like this. I want textures on her, a lot so that she can have a life of her own. I use the Pearl X pigments to add the pearl effect on her dress. To use it, I just use a little bit and a little bit of future floor wax so you can just airbrush it. And what you get is a very cool pearl effect. For her brooches, I will also use a pearl effect, but to mark the shadows a bit more on her newly sculpted feathers. To shade, I also use pastel shadings. Now, let me pause a bit here. Ever since I started GK Building, I heard that if you don't do the whole thing with just the airbrush, it's not an airbrush project. And it's less of an impact because it feels like you've cheated. I used to have this belief. But when I saw other people use pastels and do incredible works, I thought, wow. Unless you have a $400 airbrush and have the pulse of a surgeon, you won't be able to shade as well as you would want to. But when pastels are used, you have more control and you end up with awesome effects. So some people use them, some don't. I like to, so I use them and I love them. It's just a personal decision to determine one's style. Back to topic, masking the face so that I can paint her hair later. Since I don't want any paint runs, I added some liquid masking to complete the seal. For her hair, I decided to use silver to mark the shadows and give it a shiny look. Masking the dress was a bit more tedious as I only wanted to paint the color stripes and the sleeves. So instead of wasting masking tape, I used clear plastic wrap and secured it with tape on the sides. For her sleeves, I wanted to add a metallic color to it. So I decided to use some Elclad 2 polished aluminum paint, but to be able to use it correctly, you need a black base. Then you just spray it over. After it dries, I used a clear yellow so that the effect can turn out like a type of metallic gold. So when using clear paints, it's always recommended to do it in layers until you build up the color. I also painted the color stripes metallic to give it clear tones and also got the same effect. Since it's a rainbow color, I mix clear paints one over the other to get a different type of tone. Since one of the stripes is pink, and there's no transparent pink around, I just used less layers of red to make the effect. Remember my present analogy? Well, it's time to open up the surprise and see what we got. Always try to use gloves when handling your painted pieces. Your fingers produce oil and if your hands are even a bit dirty, you will accidentally leave your fingerprint and stain the piece. It's not a pretty picture. It has happened to me lots of times. So I pretty much learned my lesson. And at last, the present is open. It still has some little details to fix, but nothing hard to do. For this next section, I want to apologize. You see, I don't have anybody to help me when I film myself painting. So I was supposedly sure that my hands were not in the way when I was painting the details on her eyes. But hopefully you get the idea. I promise next time to have some more help with me while I paint, which is a bit difficult because painting eyes sometimes takes hours.
I left the cape for last. For this piece, I wanted yet another texture. So first I apply the shades in all the places where the shadows would normally show in the folds, and also finishing up with pastel to mark some more shades in hard to reach places where it needs to be the most. After it dried, I used Mr. Crystal Clear Sapphire Blue. This paint is transparent, but depending on where the light hits it, it will shine blue. The pen is blue. The pen is blue! The effect is more than I ever hoped for. It looks like it's wet, but it's actually the blue reflection from the light that touches it. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, the completion of Sailor Cosmos. The total time I took to paint her was about 4 months due to the moths that I made for her. I know a lot of details can't be seen in this video, especially because it's shaky, but sadly I don't have a tripod and a dolly to move the camera. So I invite you to visit my official website to check out her gallery. If you have any suggestions on what tutorials to do next, send me a private message or leave it in the comments section and I will take your ideas into consideration for a new video tutorial. As always, keep on rocking and building. See you next time, Risenhead. Heads.